Hi, and welcome back to the workbench. Recently, I did a video called Quiet Between Trains, which I'll put a link to from, from this one, which talked a lot about the why behind this latest Cameo layout, uh, Pont de Las. And, uh, and whilst that video was something I wanted to put together, it was something that I was keen to share with you all, uh, I did deliberately stayed away from the how and uh, and so this is a quick follow-up a uh, chance to take another look at this scene and to talk about some of the techniques and methods that uh, have gone into putting it together as well as a sort of blend between the why and the how because there's some elements in in this craft which i think come from in here so i can tell you how i did it but i think you'll you'll learn a bit more about the why as well so uh, as per usual i'll bring you a bit closer set you up on the bench here and, uh, and we'll dive in um, move from, from one side of the scene to the other, talking about some of the uh, particular uh, constructional techniques and um, compositional ideas. So, without further ado, come on, let's have a look. So, welcome to Pont de Las. This small scenic layout is barely 60 centimetres long and probably only about 23, 24 centimetres deep. Inspired by the railways of Mid Wales, uh, drawing specific inspiration from the Cardigan branch, but also the line from Carmarthen to, to Aberystwyth. First thing to note is probably the back scene, which is a personal one and not quite in the area. It's uh, it's a scene from near where my mum lives in Pembrokeshire, uh, but obviously feels very Welsh and, and uh, it's not a million miles away. Certainly has the right feel for me. So we'll start at the left hand end of the layout and we have a small road road bridge or bridge over the road. And um, this has been scratch built in styrene, but um, my usual cameo layouts with the track laid straight on the bottom of the box. But in this case, I raised the track bed because I wanted that embankment and the ability to look up and see the train. You know, as many of us have done, we've walked alongside railways or driven alongside or underneath them. Uh, so that was quite important to me. So this gave me the opportunity to build this bridge in, this in the first place. Um, it's just various sections of styrene. I, I, I start with the styrene core and overlay it with, with the slater's embossed sheets and then carefully paint and weather it. The bridge itself is made up of evergreen section of girders and, and various sections and those posts as I have done with previously with Innes Last they were drilled and some suitable brass wire inserted to look like the sort of handrails. These wonderful fence posts are actually just one mil square or 40 thou um, square section uh, rod with the end slightly chamfered in the two directions as you often see on uh, on fence posts no wire required. Behind the uh, the bridge there you can see uh, the farmhouse which I've talked about on my blog it's even features in my second book uh, something I was really proud of and uh, and it's found a home I'll just see if I can focus the camera it's found a home here on the layout and uh, and feels very much part of the layout of the scene typically Welsh although uh, nor more North Wales and, uh, and on the Cambrian coast. I think it, it feels like the sort of, as I said when I built it, it feels like the sort of places I used to go on holiday in South Wales. As we move through the scene, you'll note a proliferation of, uh, of scratch built oak trees. Um, let's bring our focus onto this more, this closer one. These are twisted wire armatures um, but the but the wire isn't uh, quite you know thick florist wire. It's actually uh, individual strands of copper from a forty five amp cable, the sort of stuff that you use in uh, wiring uh, for van modifications and things. I bought a short length from from eBay, 
and I've used that for these trees. And I start from individual strand pairs, or I start with a pair of wires, start twisting them together, and then twist pairs, 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 build them up, um, and and create the shape here. And, and the way that oaks twist and turn and gnarl, and you know, it, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. The uh, the basic structure, the trunk is then coated with uh, with PVA glue, uh, which sets those those strands. Uh, tight and also stops the thing unraveling. Once that's dry I use a bark mixture which I make out of a bit of acrylic paint, some filler and some more PVA and paint that onto the trunk to, to take out the, the undulations as best you can. I usually do a couple of coats and then the tree is painted so it's primed and then painted. Uh, I've always struggled with these projects in end previously where to, you know, to get that airy foliage feel you know if you use sort of our out-of-the-box foliage packs the um, the pieces of foam in them are often too coarse. So this is actually Woodland Scenics polyfiber uh, with just their grass scatter, their flock scatter, scattered on. Uh, and then the, the colour has been adjusted um, with uh, with an airbrush, airbrushing on some greens. And the trees behind are a slightly darker colour uh, on purpose to give some depth to the layout, but, uh, but they follow the same uh, process. And in this scene too, you can see real variation in the grass. So if you look at that embankment, you'll notice it's more yellow. Um, if you looked up close, you'd notice the grass was slightly longer. Not like ridiculously long. Uh, embankments traditionally were looked after. We didn't want any fires from stray stray ash, uh, embers from uh, from steam engines. But yeah, it's yellow of grass. And along the bottom of the, uh, the embankment, uh, we've got a sort of scrubby hedge, and that's just Woodland Scenic's um, foliage it's teased out and uh, it's the dark green, I think, teased out and um, pushed down into the fibres as I'm sort of layering up, up and gluing them. And then the field in the foreground is a mixture of two mil and four mil uh, sort of wintry brown colours. And perhaps I should have gone a touch greener, but I think the shades work well for me. Whether they work well for you, I don't know, but, uh, but I enjoy looking into this scene. And they're layered up on top of uh, Earth Blend, it's called, but it's a sort of brown brownie green uh, for a uh, fine scatter from Woodland Scenics uh, to which I add a bit of coarse turf here and there um, and then build the static grass up on top of that and I use a Pico precision applicator I think I've talked about this before it's a very small head applicator and so you can only do a small bit at a time and so you actually naturally get a variation once that base layer is down I use a um, you know distinct sprays of, uh, of lacquer to, uh, to then add sort of longer grass here and there or to change the tone or to build up density. Moving down the layout a little bit further here, uh, we can see a small halt. This is supposed to sort of represent a, a the wider flatter area in the foreground, like perhaps there was a siding here at some point, but that's gone. And the halt is still just about here. A uh, sleeper built platform is made out of styrene. We have some slaters, Great Western style fencing along the back and a small uh, corrugated waiting shelter, very typical of the ones on the Cambrian, but uh, I'd seen them elsewhere on Great Western branches. You'll note the, the level crossing isn't really a level crossing. This is supposed to be more like a farm track, so you don't have like a red disc on the gate or anything. It's, it's just a, a metal gate. Um, so quite why we have such a grand crossing keeper's cottage is, is anyone's guess. Uh, but I copied that structure from one at, uh, I think it was Pen Clipping, and I think that's on the car, on the Cardigan branch, but it's a while since I looked at the reference material. Uh, again, the styrene sort of structure that with uh, with paper slates and uh, usual sort of texture created from using gloss paint and then applying um, talcum powder to that. So that's what gets you the wall texture uh, of the render. Things I'm really pleased with in this composition here, I don't know if you can quite make them out, those level crossing gates, but plus the field gate. The field gate's left open because when you're looking into the scene from quite a sort of low angle, the, that open gate allows you to view the station, you know, the, uh, the crossing keeper's cottage and also look up to the level crossing. So I quite liked the way it led the eye, um, you know, and, and field gates are sometimes left open anyway. And anyone who says that's an un untypical gate needs to come here and look outside across the road because uh, quite a few of the gates around here of that style. 
Uh, so I, I don't know whether it was a sort of a state style of gate uh, in this part of North Wales, but uh, but it's it certainly based on, on something. Behind the station, a different type of tree. We've got uh, three pines. Now, they're probably really great Western pines. They're inspired by maritime pines, the photos in Gordon Gravitt's book. I just love the look of the trees so much. I actually made some and then thought, well, perhaps they'll stand in for for typical Great Western Pines on, on this project there. Just a quick word about track and ballast. It is British Fine Scale Code 40 Bullhead. It's like, a, it's kit built track really. You need a little assembly jig that you, you can buy from British Fine Scale as well. You slide the rail into uh, into injection molded sleepers. Um, and build up lengths yourself. Uh, slightly time consuming, but very rewarding. And I think that the results are worth it. Uh, that's been hand painted. Sleepers and rails are hand painted and then ballasted with Woodland Scenics Fine Grey. And I think the, the results, I've used it on all my engage layouts of, of recent times. I think the result is not only pleasing uh, to the eye, um, but actually feels you know very close to scale as well. Uh, looks great with modern N-gauge stock, so uh, so really happy with that and happy to recommend that. A couple of co important compositional elements on this layout. The way the track is laid on an embankment here and the ability to look through it. This, this road leads us into the scene, it makes the railway feel bigger than it is. It curves gently and then tucks around behind the hill behind, so we can't quite see where it goes. But glimpses under the bridge, we see the farmhouse beyond. But more than that, this funneling effect of the uh, road narrowing to the to the road bridge, um, it's a good way of making something feel a little bit bigger than it really is. So, uh, so some tips and tricks there. Uh, and as I said earlier, this this embankment and this bridge are have proven to be wonderful muses for photographing locomotives and enjoying rolling stock posed on the layout. So yeah, success all round in that way. This view through the farm gate and up to the crossing, it's a way of stealing a snap of, or a, this view through the farm gate and up to the crossing, it's a way of snatching a view of the railway without having to have two roads exiting on stage. I felt if this little farm track or this sort of secondary road came to the front of the baseboard, it would feel very cliched. It would make the layout feel smaller. So its exit is tucked away stage right behind that wing that you can just see on in view. And by having the open gate, we're actually able to sort of jump onto the road visually and look up to the crossing beyond, um, which you know, I think helps a great deal with uh, with telling the story and inviting a viewer to to enjoy it in the way that we intended. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that tour of Pont Delos and, uh, and an explanation of, uh, as I say, of, of some of the, uh, the methods and the compositional ideas, uh, perhaps giving you some food for thought for your own projects, maybe even some inspiration. I look forward to hearing what you all get up to uh, having watched, uh, watched the video. Um, I'm really pleased with how this has come out. What happens next? I don't know where where this journey takes me now. This this scene itself feels finished. Um, it's certainly complete as well. You know, there's there's no more emotional energy in, in this project. Uh, but actually, I really enjoy looking at it. So whilst my original sort of ideas were build it and move it on, uh, as I do with some of these sort of more experimental pieces, it, it might stay here for a little bit longer and get enjoyed just in the workshop. Uh, so yeah, so we'll see. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. I, I do appreciate your time. Uh, if there's any questions you have or thoughts, and I, I really enjoy reading those, thinking about them, responding to them. So, you know, by all means, leave them here. My blog's updated daily as well. So 
that's another place where you can engage with me and talk to me about uh, about the work I'm doing, perhaps what what interests you, and how that uh, that overlaps. So uh, so do take a look there. There's a link on the video. And uh, and in the meantime, we'll see where this uh, this journey takes us next day. So until next time, see you soon.